welcome into my guitar review channel guys. Today I have a 2012 ESP Snake by James Hetfield signature in black gloss finish. It is one of those guitars that I've wanted to review for a long time now and it's finally here. I've done a couple of videos now on the channel but never a James Hetfield signature and most of you don't know that I'm a huge fan and collect Hetfield guitars. This one is the ESP Snake Bite in Black, it also comes in white and a couple of other finishes. This particular Snake Bite was made in 2012 and it comes with the EMG 6081 combination. Later on in 2015 EMG introduced the James Hetfield signature set that I have in the white guitar. Anyway, what do we got here? First of all, mahogany body, solid. One piece mahogany neck. Beautiful ebony fingerboard. The awesome snake bite inlay on the 12th fret. Oops, we seem to be missing a P in the logo. My favorite Spurzel locking tuners. Hetfield's favorite control combination, neck volume, bridge volume, three-way switch down on the guitar. On the back we got the tray for the 9 volt battery, the pickups are active, black gloss finished neck and this guitar has a SS serial number. In this particular case SS stands for signature series, don't confuse it with standard series. Later year models are with E and K serial numbers, let's put the guitar aside on this stand. I wanna show you the certificate of authenticity that comes with these guitars. Here it is, ESP model snake bite. We got the serial number SS, signature of the production manager, and the date 2012, 9th of May. James Hetfield signature. The case interior is finished with this uh, silver plush, really awesome and soft to the feel. And we have a compartment for strings, tools. Here you can find the Allen wrench for the locking bridge and tailpiece, and the key for the case. All ESP guitars come with this big Explorer case, black Tolex, white stitching and it's huge, barely fits on the back seat of any car. It has 4 latches and the sturdy thick leather handle with white stitching. Before I start with the black snake bite, I'm gonna give you a quick look of the white one. I'm gonna do this in a separate video really soon, hopefully. I need to change the strings on this one and take care of it, then I'm gonna show it to you. What exactly is the snake bite? According to the ESP website, it is made by hand at the ESP Custom Shop in Japan. The ESP Snake Bite is a signature series model of James Hetfield, the frontman of Metallica and one of the world's most highly respected rhythm guitar players in any genre. I agree with that. If you don't know who James Hetfield or Metallica are, you should slap yourself hard right now. I am assuming you all know who he is, so I'm gonna move on. The first year of production of the Snake Bite is considered to be 2011 and the early models had the EMG set 8160 like this one. The EMG headset was not yet released, that came later, for the late 2014 model year. The general idea of the ESP Snake Bite was to replace the Gibson Explorer guitars that Hetfield had because ESP are endorsing him. And of course you cannot talk about Gibson without mentioning lawsuits so ESP had to modify the shape of the Explorer a bit and the Snake Bite was born. They started with two basic colors, gloss black and gloss white. I have already showed you those. Eventually they introduced the satin black finish and the new for 2022 Snake Bite Camo. The gloss white, the satin black and the camo are still listed on the official website but the gloss black is no longer there. All of the ESP Snake Bite guitars of course have the LTD version. There was also a limited run of baritone snake bites in purple, but we will discuss this another time. I have a history with this particular snake bite. I bought it back in 2015 from a friend of mine in Istanbul, Turkey. I used to live there for a while and I got some interesting guitars including this ESP, an LTD Iron Cross and a couple of others. This black snake bite was my first expensive guitar, even though I got a great deal on it. Thank you my friend. Eventually I came back to my home country and made a great new friend through this guitar. He is the lead singer and the rhythm guitar player for the biggest local Metallica tribute band, Hammerhead. I've seen some pictures of him with the white snake bite and I wanted to compare guitars. He ended up buying the guitar. But now he has an LTD Grinch on the way, so the guitar is back for sale. I'm gonna clean it up good, make it look shiny and feel nice for the next owner. I feel like Alan Grant in Jurassic Park. 
I want to make this thing as shiny as possible so besides the daily formula one that I'm using every day I'm gonna polish the front and the back with Music Nomad guitar polish I'm also applying some F1 fingerboard oil this would be a good time to bring the specs on screen I will go over the specs of this snake bite for those of you who are not familiar with the guitar we got mahogany body solid one piece mahogany neck ebony fingerboard 22 extra jumbo frets 12 inch radius the pickups are EMG 60 at the neck EMG 81 at the bridge neck volume bridge volume three-way switch the bridge is metric tone pro locking and goto locking tailpiece as well Spurzo black locking tuners I'm gonna move the pickups out of the way which is easy because they're on this quick connect system that EMG uses I'm gonna give you a better look of the cavities that house the pickups not much to see here they're painted with this shielding paint I see on a lot of guitars here is the quick connect plug for the neck pickup bridge cavity same situation shielding paint plug for the bridge pickup the quick connect system is super convenient I used to experiment with pickups on this guitar I had the James Kettle TMG signature setting here I was able to swap back to the original set in minutes as I already said this guitar was made in 2012 they were using the EMG 6081 set back then the James Kettle TMG signatures were not yet made here is the original for this guitar EMG 60 neck pickup made in 2011 made in USA of course and the original EMG 81 bridge pickup also made in 2011 in USA if you want to see a comparison between this set and the headset that I had in the white guitar there is a video that I'm gonna link in the description with me comparing a lot of Hetfield guitars the pickups feature flat slanted pickup rings short screws for the front long screws for the back I don't think we'll get a proper reading of the active pickups with the multimeter but anyway I'm gonna give you the information of the EMG 81 and then I'm gonna give you the information of the EMG 60 humbucker and show you what the multimeter reads and I'm gonna give you the middle position we got a black metric bridge and tailpiece the bridges locking tone pro the bridges in perfect working condition intonates properly only cosmetic wear on the saddles from contact with the hand the bridge is using those one and a half millimeter allen bolts to lock to the struts and one is missing always make sure that those are locked in place or you will end up losing them from vibration what they do is lock to those struts so you don't lose the setup when changing strings it's not a big deal that one is missing and you can easily find one and buy one more thing when you adjust the string height always unlock those or you end up with cosmetic wear like this I think the tailpiece was replaced at some point I replaced it with a Goto made in Japan again locking because I wanted to be black and not worn out I should mention that the locking bolts on the tailpiece are longer than those on the bridge so you cannot just swap them you lock it with the one and a half millimeter allen wrench provided in the case one piece mahogany neck with beautiful ebony fingerboard and 22 extra jumbo frets it features real pearl inlays pearl side dot inlays and the signature for James Hetfield snake which gives the guitar the name snake bite and I'm gonna teach you guys how to distinguish the ESP from the LTD just by looking at the 12th fret the snake on the ESP has an eye in the inlay the LTD doesn't so if you don't see an eye on the snake you got an LTD guitar same thing with the white guitar the snake has an eye on you I'm gonna show you a picture of the 12th fret of the LTD it is a blind snake measurements of the neck 42.8 millimeters at the first fret or 1.68 inch 12th fret measures at 52.4 millimeters or 2.06 inches thickness of the neck at the first fret is 20 millimeters or 0.78 inch neck thickness of the 12th fret is 22 millimeters or 0.86 inch and just for good measure the body thickness is 39 millimeters or 1.53 inch thin U neck profile for the first and 12th frets 
The snake bite doesn't have binding on the neck, but ESP achieved a similar effect by painting the edge of the ebony fingerboard with black paint and coating it with polyurethane finish. The original bone nut is perfectly fine, but if I wanna completely black out this guitar, I would change it with a black horn. The thrust rod is in a perfect working condition, no problems here, and you can kind of see the wood in the cavity. We are at the headstock and this one seems to be missing a leather, it's only ES, not ESP. I don't know what my friend does to these guitars, he broke an LTD logo as well. They are pretty fragile and I've seen the P leather hanging on some of James Hetfield's actual guitars. But this particular snake bite was never abused like James's personal guitars. Good news is those are sold separately and I would put a blacked out logo. Another unique feature to this guitar is the snake bite headstock. It is made to resemble a viper head and of course avoid a lawsuit from Gibson. To top off the cool look of the snake bite, they've included the James Hetfield signature truss rod cover. White on the bottom, black with Hetfield signature on the top. It is a signature guitar with a signature on it. Signature section. I'm gonna show you some of the comfort cutaways that you cannot easily see on pictures. One is here on the lower horn for high fret axis, one is here on the top. And then you got the big one, the top horn slopes, providing forearm comfort, unlike the Gibson Explorer guitar. Of course, a black guitar looks like a mirror, not much to see here anyway, so we move directly to the electronics compartment. The EMG quick connect system with the stereo output jack for this one with black rectangular plate 25k volume pot this is the bridge volume on a quick connect system again and one more 25k pot for the neck volume this is the control module for the EMG pickups and right next to it the three-way switch any three-way switch will do the pickups are active and this is the cavity for the 9 volt battery. I've removed the cover, this is what it looks like. And this is the cover, it's like an ashtray, it resembles a car ashtray. This tray is one of the features that distinguishes the ESP version from the LTD. The LTD has a plastic back cover. Nothing special, just provides a quick access to the 9 volt battery. You don't have to unscrew anything. This is what the tray for the 9 volt battery looks like installed on the guitar. I'm gonna give you guys a look with the battery inside it and then I'm gonna pull it out. As I said, pretty neat and looks stylish on the ESP Snakebite. This is the plastic cover with some shielding, it's for the EMG electronics. The ugly trash can sticker is here instead on the headstock. Black shaller strap buttons, set neck construction for the Snakebite. Pretty comfortable too even though it's a bit steep but you get a good high fret axis. Unlike the LTD 3-piece, this ESP has a one-piece mahogany neck and a small volute. I love guitars with volutes, they are pretty comfortable for me. The back of the headstock looks like this. The ESP Snakebite features my favorite locking tuners, Spurzo Black Inline 6, ESP Signature Series logo on the back, SS serial number, made in 2012, made in Japan. And those Sperzo locking tuners are another feature that distinguishes the ESP from the LTD. The LTD features LTD locking tuners. I've applied some tuned Music Nomad paste on the nut and bridge just for extra tuning stability. Not exactly my favorite brand but I'm gonna set this guitar in E flat standard with 1046 downloads and for the purpose I've locked the bridge and tailpiece as you can see and the way you string this guitar is you angle the tuners that the strings go directly through them, lock it from the bottom, not too tight, and then rotate the tuner so the string comes at around 90 degrees, like this. You will tune it later on. The locking tuners are gonna do their job, they are holding okay for now. You don't need to overdo it, don't over tighten the string from the bottom. Don't wrap the string around the tuning head. Locking tuners don't work like this. This guitar is super light, almost the exact same way as a Gibson SG Custom or a ESP Viper. It is 3341 grams or 7.3 pounds. Now let's hear a basic sound demo of it.
since this guitar is up for sale, I'm gonna do a general rundown of the condition. And I'm gonna straight up say it. this is a player's grade guitar. It has a lot of scratches, not too many dings and such. But you can clearly see that it's not in a brand new condition. If you're a serious collector and you want a snake bite to display, just buy a new one. This guitar is in a perfect playing condition, no issues with it, no technical issues. It plays great, the neck is set for a low action, no wear on the frets. The bridge has only cosmetic wear to it, it intonates perfectly. If you don't want to hear any buzz through the clean channel, I suggest setting the action a bit higher. And what's important, it's mostly original parts, I've only replaced the tailpiece for better looks. The guitar also features the original case and the certificate of authenticity with it. And for those of you who know, prices ain't going down, especially for James Hetfield or signature guitars. If you wanna buy a brand new black guitar, you have to settle for the setting and it will set you back the whopping sum of $5,000. At least that's the average price in Europe right now and it's gonna get higher. The only issue with this guitar, and I wouldn't call it a major issue, is the ESP logo. I've tried gluing it a couple of times but it's too fragile and I lost the P. What I would do for this guitar is order a black one, the black ESP logo that you see on the white guitar and replace it and black out the entire guitar by changing the nut. This is the black ESP logo that I'm talking about, now imagine it on the black guitar. It will make it look even more badass. The first snake bites and the ones made to around 2015-16 were serial number SS which doesn't mean standard series, it means signature series. But there's a debate if the guitars are made in the actual Kiso custom shop in Japan. I think they were, but I am yet to find a K signature snake bite to try and compare it to the SS. Few people have tried both, I'm gonna try and find one and I'm gonna tell you the differences then. Same situation with the ESP Truckstars, they have SS and K serial numbers. I guess now is a good time to tell you my opinion about this guitar and the snake bite in general. I cannot say that I am a big fan of this guitar. It is perfectly made, on paper it's supposed to be the perfect guitar, but something is just not vibing with me, I don't know. If I have to choose, I would always choose the traditional explorer body shape and headstock. Nevertheless, the snake bite is an amazing guitar and I'm glad I had the opportunity to own one and play it for a while. If you are a Headfield fan, you should definitely give the snake bite a try. Thank you guys for watching, like and subscribe to see more.